how coronavirus could dramatically alter Michigan's 2020 football season. Next on Michigan Podcast. But there's going to be one team that's going to play solely as a team. No man is more important than the team. No coach is more important than the team. The team, the team, the team. Let's see for Anthony Clark. Waits for it. Him caught. This is no time for that. In the pocket and a sack. Tim Jamison. Brady gets terrific. Throws it and it. Touchdown night again. Schultz just before Brazil got him. And a leaping interception by Woodson. Harbaugh back to throw over the middle. Caught by Collins at the five on his feet. Touchdown, Michigan. On his way. It's good. He's 5'7, 179 pounds, a junior at Michigan. But Jamie Morris packs a wallop and he delivers for Bo Schindler. And here's your first play. Pressure coming. Second. It is Glenn Steele, number 81, who fought his way through the traffic. Option. And Robinson calls his own number. And he's going to score. Oh, an easy touchdown for Ron Robinson and Michigan. win it. We're going to win the championship again because we're going to play as a team. And when we play as a team and the old season is over, you and I know it's going to be Michigan again. Michigan. Go Blue, I'm Steve Dace. Welcome to this week's episode of Michigan Podcast. Want to warn you, this is going to be a bit of an abbreviated one, but don't let the time uh, fool you because the information in here is dynamite because it is looking like we could see a scenario unfold this fall for the 2020 Michigan football season that we've never seen before or even would have anticipated could have ever happened. A feature written for the Michigan Sports Illustrated site. Some of you know it as our very own Wolverine Digest. Courtesy of Michael Spath lays out via his sources some of the contingencies that Michigan is looking at given the uncertainties of college football this fall. What schools will play? What about the testing protocols? How do those vary school by school, let alone conference by conference? Spath says that Michigan is hearing as many as four or five Big Ten schools do not want to play. They're just not interested in taking the political hit for saying so first, and they're all just kind of staring, looking at each other. Hey, who's going to you know fall on the grenade here and be the first one out? I think I can guess at least three of them. Rutgers, which of course is in that hardest hit tri-state area. I know there's a lot of talk right now about the surging cases in Texas, Florida, and Arizona, but the reality is if you took the combined deaths of those three states, it would still only be about a third of the total deaths in New York State, despite the fact they're triple the population. So I can see why Rutgers may be on that list, why teams may not be anxious to go out and fly out there to play. I think Maryland is probably one of those teams because of its uh, it, its closeness to that tri-state area, even though it's in the DMV and not exactly in it, but it's also on that eastern seaboard. And then I think the third one could very well be Minnesota. There's a lot of problems in that state right now between the virus, unrest, et cetera. Uh, I, I, I'm guessing those are three of the four or five teams. Who knows who the other teams are, except we know it's not the following teams. We know it's not Ohio State, Michigan State, and Indiana. Why? Well, because Spath says Michigan is talking to them about doing home and homes this fall to compensate for the loss of other teams, presumably Maryland and Rutgers within the division, and see if they would be interested in filling out that schedule. I think that's a fascinating idea. We polled you about it. You're going to see those Twitter poll results coming up later on in the program. Also, Michael says that 
there's a team in the Big Ten West. I'm I'm gonna guess it's Nebraska. That already has like a 12 game supplemental schedule set up in case all hell breaks loose. Spath's sources also said it's like the Wild West out there. Everybody's calling the same schools, doing whatever they can to try to line up as much of a schedule as they can. He guesses that at least one Big Ten team, based on the conversations he's had, won't play this fall. Michigan will play either a conference-only or a regional-only schedule, and that will be the case for the Big Ten, too, which means maybe... Michigan and Washington, I think, is definitely not happening. But maybe that also means Ohio State and Oregon, not happening. Michigan State at BYU, not happening. And that he expects uh, the Big Ten and Michigan to have some answers here by early August at the absolute latest, which shows they're waiting until the last possible minute to declare their intentions here. It What's been laid out here is... A fascinating free for all. That on one hand, I'm I'm just curious to watch how it plays out. On the other, on the other hand, I'm like, yikes. And then there's the postseason. Spath has heard that the Big Ten is entertaining having a four-team playoff for the Big Ten championship in Indianapolis. Chris Ballas over at the Wolverine is reporting that they're hearing that the NCAA and the conference commissioners are looking at a unique season where everybody plays in conference. And then at the beginning of November, after the season is over, then the rest of the year, no bowl games. And the postseason is is an FCS-style 8- or 16-team playoff. I think what this shows you is that everything right now is on the table in order to salvage the season. Well, Steve, why don't they just push this to the spring? Well... That is the current uh, cause celeb of panic porn peddlers in the sports media. And I think it's done under the auspices that, hey, just give ourselves more time for science to magically conjure up the utopian vaccine to save us from having to, you know, learn how to live with uh, a virus. The problem with that is, is A, we've never developed in 70 years a vaccine for a coronavirus. Uh, B, um, we spent 12 years trying to find a vaccine for the first SARS virus and we couldn't. So there's no guarantee that you're going to have something safe for mass human consumption in the spring. So then where does the revenue come from to bring all of those players back to train them, house them, feed them, educate them. And then on top of the normal expenses, the added expense of testing them, securing them, etc., because of the pandemic. Where does that money come from if there's no TV revenue this fall? These schools don't have masses of cash reserve. Michigan is already looking at a $21 million potential deficit for this coming year if it can pull off a football season. All right. So they're not sitting on mass cash, masses of cash reserves. A lot of these schools, even the big ones in big conferences, amount, live to what amounts to paycheck to paycheck. They spend everything they have coming in. And so without that revenue there in the fall, they don't have the, the revenue to bring bring everybody back in the spring. So where would they get it? Are the TV networks going to pay up front when the games haven't even been played yet? The ads haven't even been aired yet? Where would they get that revenue to do so? Do schools take out loans? Well, then what's the collateral for loans of that magnitude? They, they wouldn't have guaranteed television revenue for if they had that, they wouldn't need loans, right? Well, is it their brick and mortar then? I mean, do we see liens on the big house, on the horseshoe, on, you know, Beaver Stadium and Happy Valley? That's why I, and then you throw in the NFL draft conflict uh, as well to moving the season of the spring. And that's why I think there's little to no chance that is going to happen. It's just not economically feasible. No, they're going to, they're going to have to learn uh, what, what Germany and Spain and the UK and Taiwan and Japan and South Korea and pretty much every other free industrialized nation on earth has learned to do. Uh, this nation, for whatever reason, as well as its media, seems resistant to learning this, but how to go ahead and go on with our lives as safely as possible, despite the fact that we're in the middle of a viral outbreak. I don't see any way, easy way out here. Um, I don't see any way we get a season that looks anything like what we are accustomed to. Buckle up. The next few weeks are going to be mighty interesting. Well, those are my thoughts about how the potential dramatic revamping of the 2020 Michigan football season could go, could look. What do you think? When we come back, we'll take a look at some of your Twitter results. Do you like the idea of playing home and homes against Michigan State and Ohio State this year? That and more in a moment. Want to thank all of you who have been supporting us on Patreon these last few years here on Michigan Podcast. And for those of you that ask us every now and then, hey, what can we do to help 
uh, support what you guys are doing and help it to grow. Well, supporting us on Patreon is a big way you can do that. Patreon.com slash Michigan podcast. And as you can see, when you become a $5 a month uh, subscriber and supporter or more, you get uh, as well exclusive content that we publish just for you on our Patreon page, including a lot of the stuff that I do with sports handicapping as legalization goes wider throughout the country. In fact, you can see uh, I put up just a couple of weeks ago. Uh, the notes uh, for NFL win totals, looking at the schedule release. So a lot more where that came from. If you want to support us at patreon.com slash Michigan podcast. A majority, 56% said, yeah, you like that idea. 38% said no. And then I, I was just curious, how many of y'all would love it if it was just Ohio State and not having to play Sparty twice? Only 6% of you. So this is a, this is a, a, a very popular uh, solution, potential uh, solution to what could be some potential scheduling problems this fall. That brings us to this week's question of the week, which comes from Ricky Spanish. Didn't Godzilla versus Kong get pushed back to 2021? So doesn't that mean you're stuck watching your annual loss to Ohio State again? First of all, love the name Ricky Spanish, man. Love that. Okay. I mean, that's got all kinds of potential. I love it. Secondly, um, yeah, that sucks. For those of you that don't know, um, I I just can't bring myself to suffer through any more losses to Ohio State. Uh, until Michigan proves that it can make it a rivalry again, I'm, I tapped out. And I went, Roberto Duran, no moss, okay? My master plan this November was to go see Kong versus Godzilla in IMAX Thanksgiving weekend, rather than subject myself to the now perennial humiliation at the hands of the Scarlet and Gray. But alas, like everything else right now, that movie has been pushed back. So I am, I'm desperately seeking the the alternative uh, programming here to the perennial Buckeye beatdown. If you have any suggestions, and keep it clean. All right. If you have any suggestions, feel free to leave those in the comments section. All right. Thanks for tuning in this week to Michigan Podcast. Don't forget, if you listen to the podcast version, like and give it a five-star review on whichever podcast platform you access us from. If it's from right here on YouTube, you can give this video a like and hit the subscribe button on our YouTube channel and share it with other Michigan fans that you know as well. And you can also find out what we think all week long via Twitter at Michigan Podcast. We have reactions to the breaking news there all the time on Twitter at Michigan Podcast. Until next week, go Blue.